we cannot be 100% plastic free but on our everyday routine we can just do very simple things like avoiding plastic straws Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Ron, I'm from Mighty Jacks, and today we have with us Kirby Rosanes. How are you, Kirby? I'm good, Ron. How are you? Wonderful, better after seeing you. I've read so much about you, heard so much about you, seen a lot of you also. You're an illustrator or extraordinaire. You work with brands, you've been on TV shows, you've got a multiple best-selling art books as well. Absolute privilege to have you with us. I heard, Kirby, that you were recently or currently still are on holiday. On a holiday right now? Were you or recently? Yeah, recently. But this week has been really, really hectic. Where were you on holiday just with my family in my home province so i got to visit them for a couple of days nice what is the holiday to you like is it time away from art or is it more time to spend with art it is always a time away from art i just gonna create like every day we cannot create every day so we have to like take some pauses or break and for me holidays or visiting other places and then doing absolutely nothing related to art i think that's the best creative fuel for me i've seen articles recently that creative people just need to have some time where they do absolutely nothing yeah, correct. <laughs> Thank you again for joining us, Kirk. Could you tell us very quickly a little bit about who you are, what you do, how it started, how it motivates you? Fire away. I'm Kirby. I'm from the Philippines. I'm a traditional illustrator and I started doing art since I was a kid. The family is inclined with art, anything, sculpture, music, we have them. And then I'm the one who actually pursued art in the family. I mean, as a professional. I started freelancing way back in 2014. So I started sharing my stuff on Facebook. Tumblr was a big thing back then and yeah it took off i mean people have seen my work and then people started commissioning me for private pieces and then company and then i started doing books also and now i'm everywhere like i'm doing everything for some brands and now i'm with my Jack. nice thank you so much you mentioned you're from the philippines do you think the philippines where you grew up the environment around you played a very big role in, in shaping you shaping your art yeah absolutely i mean i grew up in a small town in the province in the philippines and the majority of my childhood i spent it outdoors like running through green fields you know strolling for it swimming on rivers and majority of those experiences you can see it in my art like most most of the themes in my art are nature inspired and also tackling issues about uh, environmental protection. So nature has a very, very big role in shaping the kind of art that I do. And so you can see it in my art. Yeah. For sure we can, all of us can. Again, this is not a question I listed down, but is this something I wanted to ask you? You said you were the only one in your family to have pursued art. Was it encouraged by your family or were you like a rebel? Did it against their wishes? No, it was not encouraged. After I graduated, I worked as a search engine optimization specialist. SEO, so, nice. Yeah, SEO, also on the marketing side, right? I was doing that for two years, I think. Uh, it's funny because I'm also interviewing people, like creative people during that work. So I was kind of having this idea how to do freelancing at that time so when i started to figure it out i just make the big leap in 2014 so i quit the day job and then yeah, like two full time it was not encouraged by any of my family members but after a couple of years like when they see that the things that i do the things that i've accomplished so it eventually worked i mean it's okay for them now <laughs> nice one congrats to you if you don't mind let's take a dive into your latest piece with mighty jacks called message in a bottle let's just talk about the piece itself like the physical piece itself can you tell us about the different elements in this piece and how all of it fell into place so originally message in a bottle was a print release for a foundation that was supporting we wanted to create something that is very impactful in terms of tackling the issues in plastic pollution. The very first element that I thought that would work perfectly is a plastic bottle. When you look at the piece, you can immediately see that it is revolving around a plastic bottle. I think it symbolizes the pollution, the plastic pollution that we're facing right now. And we wanted to do the contrast. So we see that there's hope for nature in the entire piece. So we put corals around it. In the original artwork, there are fishes swimming around and then there are turtles. We specifically included sea turtles because it's number one of the threatened ocean and creatures in terms of plastic pollution. And also there was a very important piece that we also included is the skeleton inside the bottle. It kind of stitches the concept together in a way that it shows the problem and what the problem may lead to. What will it lead to, Kirby? We are asking you this. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it will lead to something destructive for humans. What is the overall meaning behind this piece? But specifically for this piece, is there like a specific memory that 
felt like you felt really inspired this piece? During the pandemic, they say that nature is thriving because people are not outside. You can see cars anymore, but it's not the same with the ocean. So the ocean is still struggling with plastic pollution, even with or without pandemic. When the restrictions were quite relaxed in the Philippines, we actually managed to like go to the beaches and visit some places that we used to, and then it's still filled with garbage and plastic stuff like that and now during that time the medical things are added on the garbage that we see in the coastal area that experience kind of inspired this piece and also the fact that the philippines is one of the top countries that contributes to plastic pollution and it's kind of sad because you know it's it's a third world country and we are also experiencing stronger and stronger typhoons every day with flooding everywhere and yet we don't do something about it so i think this is a very nice statement piece about what's happening in my country and eventually to the world thank you so much with everything i've seen heard and read about you uh, and even this these few minutes that we've spent together it's clear that your passion for our planet our world and all of climate change that is happening that passion is, is very real do you think any of your art or pieces has already inspired change or if not, how do you hope it will inspire change? What is the next quick step that we can do to, to make that difference? I think the very first step to really make a difference is to inform and, you know, make people aware that things like this are actually happening. When people are informed and aware of these things, they tend to make action and do things about it. We can't force everyone, but one person who do things can can make a huge difference, can make, you know, little steps. Um, I always say that it's impossible to actually get plastics out of our system. We cannot be 100% plastic free but on our everyday routine we can just do very simple things like avoiding plastic straws or bringing our own bags to the supermarket and grocery stores those simple actions can make a difference and i believe the art that i do kind of gives people um the information and the awareness that some of these things is happening it might lead to something devastating in the future if we don't do something about it thank you so much kirby i think that's all we can talk about the message in a bottle your work i just want to go back to more questions uh about you about your, your relationship with art um one thing i personally am very curious about is extreme drawing um i've seen you in a couple of videos where you start and you don't you you keep going for five to six hours and then after that there's this monumental piece of art um uh, and and i have read explanations about uh, about your relationship with extreme art, but I just wanted to, to get it out of you so that the people can hear it themselves. Um, but what is the magic of extreme drawing? How do you find so much peace in it and how do you keep going for so many hours? Well, <laughs> it actually it's hard to explain for people how... I'm, I'm not the only one who do such, such kind of art, mm. but you know, we... Um, as, as a person, you, you go, you take a break from art and then you go to some place and then what you see and what you experience in those places, you you store it in your like imagination bank, yeah. like 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 the normal bank that you that we see and that we use. So this imagination bank, you you just access it whenever whenever you want, whenever you you are in a position like you have to draw like for hours and hours of nonstop drawing. So every all the experiences that you've had growing up for. Yeah, you have to store it in your imagination bank and then just access it. So that's how we do like the extreme drawing that you're talking about. Mm. So yeah, it's really hard to explain. Some some people can can't just imagine and then just draw whatever they, they think they could. But I think it's the years of practice and yeah, patience and you know, just regularly drawing whatever you want. Nice one. Um is there any piece of art or it the, the first piece of art that you've seen uh, or experienced that that made you emotional do you remember that, that wow well, uh, i've seen a lot but i think the one that struck me the most is the painting by michelangelo on the roof of the sistine chapel in vatican yeah that's it did you see the art in person yeah Amazing. i've seen it in person i've seen it in books like on the internet and it's nothing that the experience and the emotion you will feel when you see it i can't explain the feeling it's just i was blown away nice thank you any of your own past work that holds special significance that impacts you even today that even like that like shapes your art today still uh, i think the recent pieces that i did that tackles about um, ocean protection in a way that i wanted to do more regarding the subject so 
um, after after doing so much about artworks that conveys environmental protection, I am very much picky in terms of accepting projects. If like a company or a brand is doing a collaboration that involves the ocean, mm. I immediately say, okay, let's do it. And the core of the art is always going in favor of those kinds of projects and not the other types anymore. Very nice. Kirby, you're talking about the ocean a lot and I have a personal question I want to ask you. Um, and this is not written down in any way, but uh, like I said, like uh, I've, I've been I've been visiting the Philippines, but then I've never actually done any island hopping in the Philippines. Yeah. I just wanted to get some advice from you. Like if I were to go for my first beach holiday in an island in Philippines, where would you recommend I go first? Oh, well, it depends on the kind of experience that you want to do. Like if you want chill vibe or something, you go to Boracay, the popular one. Yeah. Yeah, you just, you know, you just sit down, stare at the sea, and then just drink and then stroll around the island. That's it. That's but if you want something good. like um, extreme, if you like surfing, you like um, like riding motorcycle or whatever, you go to Shardau. So okay. That's it. In what? Palawan, if you heard about Palawan, it's also a beautiful place. That's, that's the place that you want to go for island hopping. Wonderful. And again, another question that, that uh, I, I wanted to ask you is I've noticed a lot of your art that comes with a pen, like pen and ink, and then you go from pen to paper. Like you're obviously not, you don't use like acrylic paint or, or different materials. I uh, was, yeah. was just wondering if there is a reason for that. What what inspired that? Why, why are you always sticking to a pen? When I was exploring the kind of art that I wanted to do for the rest of my life, I tried every medium available. I tried watercolor, oil painting, I even tried drawing, you know, the, the paintbrush you do when you do murals and stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I tried all of those and I easily get tired in a way or I don't have the patience to actually pick the colors that I wanted to do. So when I was actually already at work doing SEO job, I get little time to actually go and do art. So I have a pen and then a small notebook. So I tried and that's that's that kind of art actually that's the kind of art that I wanted to stick for the rest of my life. Nice. So that's the style that I developed. Also less expenses, I don't have to buy colors and stuff like that. And also it kinda opened so many opportunities because a lot of people are doing colored pieces mm. and so many so little artists are doing like black and white pieces. A couple of years ago when there's the boom with the coloring world, like adult coloring industry, I was one of the lucky lucky creators that was picked by some big publishers to actually publish books they basically told me oh you don't want to color your your art so let others color it oh wow that is sound advice yeah. very nice just got one more question one final question for you Kirby. it's not even a question sure. really um i was just hoping if you could give any aspiring artist or about to become artist any bit of advice to keep going or to take their first step into realizing their true passion if you have any form of advice what would that be my greatest advice is to be prepared like make something unique create something unique, create something that would identify that it is your style. In reality, you have to be very, very prepared for what's coming if you really decide like, make art for a living. Thank you so much, Kirby. Um, we haven't got any more questions for you, but um, if there are many questions from our audience coming in through our socials, I will definitely send them your way and then perhaps we could talk again soon, Kirby. Thank you so much. Wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. Bye.